Hi and welcome back to the Action Ecology Regenerative Farming Tour of Aotearoa, New Zealand. In this episode, I got the pleasure of getting to meet and spend time with Russell and Charlotte Heald and their regenerative dairy farm. So what's cool about this is it's kind of one of those happy accidents. I didn't know Russell and Charlotte at all, but a mutual friend who knew I was passing through said, oh, you should stop in and meet them. And man, am I glad that I did because, you know, what they're doing there is really awesome. And uh, especially being a, a dairy farm that's gone from being conventional to being regenerative and getting to sort of see that and hear their story has just been fantastic. So I'm actually really excited to share this one with you. So without further ado, let's check it out. So we're in Norsville on the east coast of the North Island of New Zealand. The dairy platform is 170 hectares um, effective and we're milking just on 400 cows. And then we have a 108 hectare effective um, runoff that is a, like a support farm to go with it. So we're pretty reasonably high rainfall here, we're about sort of 12 to 1400 mils per year. So what about those site conditions do you think influences the way you do things here? Uh, it definitely impacts in terms of when we start calving. We sort of we don't start really calving until August, um, and then have the bulk of our calving out of the way by September, and then we get into our peak um, grass growth around sort of mid October. So with the region um, system that we've been on, we end up with about sort of between 12 to 15 plus species in most of our mixes. We call it our cow salad, and what I've learned over the time is like even the docks. Having the dock in there, it's just another part of that diversity. And the dock's got a good taproot on it as well. So that's that's accessing water and nutrients from further down. That's bringing it up available for other plants. Yeah. Um, and then at certain times of the year, the cows will eat it as well. It's another good fibre source. They're all doing a job, right? They're all, yeah. They've all got a purpose. Yeah. What we used to do in the past would be on a 20 to 25 day round. And now we're minimum 30, 35 day round. And we get into our pasture growth and we go from a 35 to a 45 even up to a 50 day round so we just push feed ahead of us and by having that pasture diversity that allows us to do that so it helps with retaining moisture within the within the soil by by doing that by having higher covers we get less evaporation happening and because over the summer we can dry out slightly so it allows us to push that feed right through the summer without losing quality um, yeah, so it just it basically makes it so really makes economic sense to do it that way. So instead of in the past, we would have been cutting silage or baleage, and then three or four weeks later, be feeding that back out again. So this way, we're actually pushing feed ahead of us. We're getting the benefits that it's holding more moisture in the ground, and our roots are going deeper because the plants are actually allowing to grow out to their potential and then we're going in and grazing. These areas of the farm where we've done some cultivation, we've done some non no-till direct drilling, and then there's other parts of the farm where we've actually have just gone and broadcast the seeds and then used the animals through grazing and um, to, to develop, the, develop the land. Like you look at the growth that you'll get, a, get off that, but then you, pull, you start pulling that out and you look at what that's doing underneath. So all of a sudden you're starting to work further down through your root, through your soil profile and start extracting nutrients that are tied up further down. And also just helping that water holding capacity as well by just that infiltration right down to that depth. So Yeah, and then once, because once we start, once all the grasses come up in here, all of a sudden you, you start getting some cover, you're going to create a little microclimate on the top of the surface where you get all of this is going to then be broken down into organic matter um, and then you've got all the seeds from the um, what we were growing as well that are going back down and um, they're going to a lot of them are going to strike but you're going to build a really good strong seed bank as well because mm. that's that's another big part of the region system is having those longer rounds allowing everything to go to seed through that summertime and allow that seed drop and allow that seed spread through all the dung through the cows that then that goes all over your farm and then builds you a good strong solid seed bank when you dig down all of a sudden like there's still moisture right there 
because if you dig down and out some of the other paddock, there's no like the moisture's all gone. Yeah. So if we just, if we had just worked this up and dissed it and ploughed it, you'd lose half of that or, or most of that moisture. Yeah. But we're here, it's been trapped. It's it's protected from the wind. It's protected from the sun. So the ultimate aim was to like just basically lay the trash down. So they yeah. they were probably. Uh, probably only utilizing maybe 70 percent of it okay and then the other 30 percent was being pushed back down yeah and, yep mm. be broken back down to then go back down to into your soil yeah. and um, be converted into organic matter so in here we did the it was in oats and grass and then we cut it and did it for baleage and then we did a light top work cultivation and then one part we left and just direct drilled it the other part I rolled it with an old scrub roller and then the other part we other quarter we grazed it with some with my, with the heifers and trampled it all down and then just drilled drilled straight through it all. Definitely the stuff we have cultivated and got more soil contact with the seed, as you can see it's we've had a better strike rate. Mm. But it'll be interesting to see later on what what happens. So for us we out them and we to graze a third, trample a third and leave a third. And when we can do that, the whole system is just working really well. And especially going over the summer months, we can really um, make use of that. And also what happens then is because over the summer months, our plants are going into that reproductive mode, so they're all going to seed. So it allows us to build a really good seed bank. By having those 45, 50 plus day rounds, we're getting a lot of those seeds dropping and even going through the cow and through the dung and getting spread all over the farm. What does all this mean for uh, animal health and production? Um, so production-wise, we've actually stayed the same, but we haven't dropped off at all in our production. So we can leave those pasture diversity, high diversity mixes go to 45, 50 days, put the cows in there and not look, and not drop any production. Whereas if we did that with our traditional rye and clover paddocks, then the cows would just crash. Tell us, what are we looking at here? So on one side of the fence, we've got a paddock that's um, being put in our full pasture mix. So it's nine plus species as well as whatever else has come away. Um, and then on the other side, it's just a traditional rye paddock that we haven't done anything with yet. Um, and just the difference in the animal performance off the paddocks is really noticeable. Especially when you're milking, you see it straight away in the back. Yeah. Um, so, and then we haven't done any measures in terms of what's happening underneath, but yeah, there's, there's so many benefits to having that diversity of pasture species for what it's putting down as liquid carbon to feed feed all the microbiology within the soil compared to just having a rye and clover mix. We've seen some huge benefits health-wise because we're basically allowing our plants to fully mature before we're grazing them. So we're, they're actually got all the nutrients and trace elements that they need to grow, which then when we graze with our animals, our animals are, are getting that. Yeah, this is Henry's favourite. Ah, okay. oh, you too, Blackie. Yep. <laughs> no <I'm> the pets. <laughs> yeah. It's so nice. Like, one thing we've noticed, the cows are just so chilled out. Like, yeah. They're just happier. And that's, that's our motto on farm is mm. that healthy soils create healthy plants, create healthy cows. Equals happy cows equal happy farmers. That's our yeah. our go-to. Like, yeah. So, yeah. You're missing out, Blackie. Eh? <laughs> hmm? I love a good scratch. Hmm. So we've probably decreased our um, animal health expenses by at least 50 to 60 percent. It's been a huge change. And and what have you noticed in terms of like the the reduction of costs for inputs and things like that? Yeah, so that's been a massive, massive change for us too. Like we've, we've taken, when we first started, we took just over 200k out of our feed bill, um, so which has been massive to our bottom line, and we've retained similar production levels. What would you say um, are some of the most significant challenges that you've had to overcome when starting on this you know, journey? Um, in terms of challenges, there actually hasn't been too many challenges because we've been really open to it. And because we we're already on the biological pathway and we're already going down that pathway of reducing chemicals and reducing synthetic fertilisers and chemical fertilisers, then it wasn't too much of a change for us. So we haven't really had 
too many challenges. It's been just mainly all benefits, really. Yeah. Like, so, and it's all about for us. It's just a, about improving that immunity and of our soils and growing, getting biological activity and growing our soils mm. and making them stronger, which is giving us stronger, healthier plants, which then flows onto our cows. So we're getting stronger, healthier cows that have got a stronger immune system. So any time that something does come up in terms of any mastitis or anything, that they have actually got a stronger system to be able to fight that off and to recover. It's just good having that diversity and creating that, like what I was saying before, like that cow salad. Mm. So you've got that complexity, different complexity of plant available sugars for your cow. So she, it's basically what they're eating, they're getting a full nutritional diet. Yeah. About nutritional, well, nutritional balanced diet. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you can cut out all those inputs and still get improved animal health, improved pasture growth. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so all this is quite a big departure in a lot of ways from the sort of more conventional approach, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It has been a, a big shift for us. And it's, um, but yeah, we're really reaping the benefits. And we're about four years into our reaping journey. It's been a pretty gradual process, just learning as we go. Like every day, I'm just learning more and more about how the system works and how everything fits in. And, yeah. and what's that been like, you know, like as your job, as your life? Like, what's that like to just love it? Just love what we do. Like, it's just so much enjoyment in what, what I do now. Like, I just love getting up in the morning and, um, and going out and milking the cows and going out and looking around the farm and and just spreading that word about all the region because it's actually, it's so enjoyable. I just get so much out of it. From what you've learned so far in your journey, what do you reckon is the real key to making this work you know, for somebody that's thinking of going down this path? So the key for us has been um, what, we've, what we've come across and with working with uh, um, consultant Greg Barclay, or more of a sort of farm coach really, is just getting the there's four pieces of a jigsaw puzzle that need to all connect to make the whole system work. So it's all around the pasture species, the plant species, around the biology, and um, so in terms of the bacteria and fungi that we're adding into the system, around the minerals, so around what we're doing with our dry mix in terms of adding in some good naturally mined trace elements and, um, and minerals to, into the system and then around our grazing management, how we manage that. When you look down in here and you look at the mix of everything that's here, when you look down on the base there, and everything's still green and growing in the bottom, there's, like your leaves aren't dead in the bottom, and that's one thing we've noticed. And so, when did you say you were last? So this got last, this was cut for hay on the to uh, 29th of January. Wow. And we're the 21st of Feb. Yep. So you can see dandelion's one that just comes back naturally. Yeah. Um, that's one thing like you got, we haven't even sown. Yeah, and the, and the, and the sort of humidity down well, at you this... can feel the moisture yeah. on it, can you? Yeah. yeah. So how many species do you reckon are in here? So we planted nine plus species, but there would be with uh, what comes back, so with your dock and your dandelion and your lotus, that just comes back naturally, um, there'd be easily 12 to 15 plus. So just holding a chicory plant here that was um, planted in our winter mixed species and then was grazed by the cows and then we put our summer mix, um, pasture mix, species in here and then have just had the um, calves grazing through here and just trying to put more back into the soil rather than actually always cutting and taking from it. So. Wow, that must be what, two metres tall? Be close, yeah, be Even. Over, over two metres tall, top of that. So that's really going to be just pumping, pumping a lot of liquid carbon back down into our soil, like it's just, yeah, yeah it's an awesome way for us to regenerate our paddock after it's been through, had the cows in there over winter and done a bit of damage, it's the perfect way to re regenerate and get our soil back going again. And it's full of life. Yeah, so much life in here. What that's doing is 
doing, eh? Like just getting that soil back going again. It's, and you look from that last grazing, how much has been put back down, and the, like just that coverage of the soil and all that there's breaking down. You got all the grasses coming back and the clovers, yeah, and all these all the seeds. So it's just, yeah, worked out really really well. Yeah, I drove through here on the track to, to put the new trough in before we get, yeah. and um. It was literally above the top of the tractor guard. <laughs> yeah, it was just amazing. That was before we grazed it. Mm. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Yeah. So the calves, the calves aren't due back in here for probably another two weeks. And then, how far do you reckon you'll take it down? Then, what's the plan? Oh, they'll only just take the top off it. They'll yeah. only just take take all this good green vegetative green matter off, and then take them out again. Mm. Yeah. And you'll leave. Well, they'll go out of there, leaving it still protected. Yeah, and they'll still they'll they'll push more and more of this down, and then those then as that gets squashed down, the other part's going to be coming up through it. So, mm. And then once you have that squashed down and and have that died off, then that's going to be absorbed and taken back down into into the soil. So the, the plants just get stronger and stronger. Yeah, I know. Like when you can leave leave a plant like this and give it that time without chewing it right down it just makes everything so much more stronger and more resilient yeah. that root system's just got time to oh like if you pull one up one of those they're probably down that far and then the network around it and that and that in a sense is like your you know your, your bank account your biological bank account right oh, definitely mm -hmm. yep yep yeah well you're just you're converting all that free atmospheric carbon and excrete and the plants are making use and excreting it back down and into the soil to feed everything. But there's a difference between in the regenerative system with a grazing and then like a cut and carry system. So if you can with what we've seen on our runoff, we can we can actually grow our soil just as quick if not quicker than what we can on the dairy farm with through grazing cattle on it and trampling down. So what happens is because we've got our biology working within our soil and we've got that diversity of plants, if you can leave it 90 to 100 or even up to 120 days before you come in and harvest that grass, you think about the amount of liquid carbon that's going down and getting excreted and fed into that network of the mycorrhizae and, mm. and all the bacteria that it's feeding, then that's, and the, the plant roots, how much they're growing and then when you're cutting it and then you're allowing it to grow again then that's how you that's how you're building our so building the soil here mm. so so you can actually almost grow it just as quick under a cut system cut and carry system than what you can on a grazing system mm. and i think that's something that's not really hasn't really been looked into as much so so tell me a bit about what you're doing here with the trees then so what do you got over here? So Let's with the um, trees, our aim on farm is to have five to ten trees on every fence line. Um, so we've gone along and done some shelter belts um, and then just some single trees along fence lines that have fenced stuff separately. Um, and then the ones in the shelter belts we've put in a toy toy in between about every three metres apart. And then the, um, we've put a Veronese poplar in. Everything's a fodder source for the animals so if we have a really dry year we can turn the power off or lift a wire and allow the cows to come in and actually graze those down so really um, as well as protecting um, creating another almost microclimate along those hedge rows and um, and it's a shade source for the cows in the in the heat of the summer um, so there's so many benefits to doing it and just basically also changing how the wind flows over the farm as well has a huge impact on on what happens to our plants and to our soil. So these were planted back in July. Oh yeah. And so this is my first time um, going around and releasing them and we should only have to do it once, maybe twice, but yeah. um, by cutting the grass back like this and just laying it down around them it's, it's helping to protect them and um, allows that sunlight to get in there. And, um, but you still want to 
you still want that grass around them to protect them, to help them grow and get them established. So, and because I've had no chemicals there, then everything's working underneath, like where you've dug a hole and disturbed it, everything's working again. So, mm. and yeah, it's all about protecting and nurturing that tree to get up and get established. What about the future? Like, what are you sort of excited about? You know, what are your plans? What are you sort of building towards? What do you hope to be, you know, this farm to be like? And, you know, so, so for us here on this farm, like, I'm just learning more and more about the region system. It's around that whole environment that we have on farm. So it's, it's around the soil and the plants, the animals, the trees, the people, and, and just having that all inter, interconnecting. So for us here on farm, it's more around understanding more how trees and shelter belts can affect what we're doing on farm and, and what that can add to what we're doing like so for for me ultimately this farm i want to create into a park so then it's you've got an environment for all the bees and insects all your pollinators awesome environment for your cows and animals to to be in and also for us to be in like for me to be able to drive around the farm and just turn around every corner and have a big smile on my face like that's yeah, that's that's ultimate for me because Life is about loving what you do, and I love what I do. So while I only got to spend a couple of hours really with Russell walking around the farm, I just walked away being so impressed by both them and their journey so far. Um, you know, going from being a really conventional um, dairy operation in New Zealand to what they are today is just, you know, amazing. They're so full of energy the farm is so full of life it was actually just a real pleasure to see I mean if you ever needed a, another example of the power of diversity then there you go by working with the biology of their plants and their soils even in a climate like that where it can really dry out in summer they've been able to eliminate huge amounts of cost out of the business improve the resilience of that operation and really just get the benefits for their animals and for their bottom line in the way that they manage things you know it's just fantastic to see it in action the work that russell's done over the last few years has just been phenomenal you know the pastures are healthier the animals are healthier and i mean cutting 200k out of your feed budget i mean that's got to make anyone smile right um it's just such a great experience to visit them i really hope i get to go back again soon um so that's it for today hope you enjoyed it and i uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one